place we're going to start with Araman is we're going to be painting his robes um, because there's so much of them and we want to get these out of the way first. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Magos Purple to first establish our kind of pre-shaded coat on these robes. So we just want to pick a place to start and I'm going to start on this kind of this section here separated by the belt. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make contact with the model with the Magos Purple. And I'm just going to use big, broad brush strokes to just establish a nice, smooth Magos Purple coat. So we just want to we want to leave the inside of the robes on the on the big uh, on the big cloak. Um, so continuing with that same theory, we just want to pick a place to start. And generally, you want to start near a recess and kind of finish your broad, broad, broad brush stroke at the end of the model, as it were. So we're going to pick, make contact here, and we're just going to pull it down to there. And it doesn't matter if we get some of this Magos purple on the on the armor and the other details around, because we are going to neat knit back up. Once that Magos purple is dry, we're going to do a very similar thing, but we're going to do this now with Volupus pink. So we just want to, once again, take the Volupus pink on our brush, and we just want to pick an area to start. So right up here by the recess, and then we just want to use those big broad brush strokes once again to establish our color in a nice smooth coat. like so. We just want to keep going around doing it in exactly the same way as we have done on the rest of the cloak. So we're going to actually flip the model around for this. We're going to paint from the bottom of the cloak up to the top. So we're just going to pick this fold in the cloak, make contact and pull it up. Make contact and pull it up like so. So I'm just going to keep going around doing all of this with the Volupus pink. Then we're going to come back. And next up what we want to do is we want to create a roughly 10 to 1 mix of contrast medium and screamer pink uh, to create this really runny kind of almost like a glaze type paint. And we just want to start painting this all over the kind of the big wide open spaces on these robes. Like so. And the consistency of this paint will be really, 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 really thin. So you might need a couple of coats just to build this color up. Once that screamer pink contrast medium glaze is dry, we're going to use some thinned down pink horror just to add a little bit more emphasis on these highlights. So we just want to pick out the sharpest edges. On the cloak. Like there we can see the knee pad coming through and on some of these small folds. And next up, we're going to hit the absolutely sharpest corners with some thinned down Emperor's Children. So we just want to, for example, here where the knee pads. Just want to add a little bit there, like the light is catching on these hard folds. With that, the purple is all now, well, purple pink is now all complete. And so what I've done is I've taken just a couple of moments to uh, smooth out all of those kind of splodges that I left all over the rest of the model. So uh, I'm now ready to move on to the next, to the rest of the details. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna actually just gonna finish off the cape first by doing the interior of it. And what we're gonna use is we're gonna use some skeleton hoard for this. And so once again, it's much the same 
practice as we've done with the rest of the cape. We just want to pick an area to start. We just want to use a nice big long brush stroke by making contact with the model. And you've got these spines in the way, which make it a little bit more complicated. So we'll start actually on this side. So what I want to do is I want to make contact with the model around about here to get the paint on. And then I'm going to come back in underneath and then I'm going to make contact to pull the rest of that paint out along like this. I just want, don't want to use very much skeleton hoard, but as I do, I just want to use these nice big broad brush strokes just to pull that skeleton hoard out, just to give it that nice kind of soft cream texture. Once that skeleton hoard is dry, we're going to create again a roughly 10 to 1 medium mix with some flayed on flesh, just to kind of give this cape a nice kind of really soft, bright, creamy con uh, color. Uh, and we just want to probably just want to start painting this really thin mix on, um, trying to keep it nice and even as we do it. And you might want to build this up and do like two or three thin coats of this just to get it looking nice and soft and consistent over the skeleton hoard. And where possible, if you can, just leave some of that skeleton hoard just shining through a little bit in the darkest recesses of the inside of the cape. With all that done, we can now move on and we can start painting the rest of Araman. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint the armor first. So the color that we're going to use is Talisar Blue. And this is, of course, for all of the blue armor, that, all that lovely blue Thousand Suns armor that we have. So using the Talisar Blue, we just want to pick out the areas that are the kind of the recessed details. So like in here, and we just want to start painting this Talisar Blue all over and you don't want to use very much because you don't want it to be too dark in there you want it to be this nice vibrant blue that the thousand suns in 40k at least are known for rather than that lovely candy red from the heresy so we're just going to keep going around like this I mean, like i said we're not using very much as we do this we're just being very steady as we do it and using a very sparing amount just to color these in to give us that nice blue. Once all that Talisar blue is dry, we're gonna add a little bit more depth to some parts of the armor using some Ultramarines blue. And we're gonna do this in two ways. So on some places like on the shoulder pads, we're actually just gonna give it a recess shade of this Ultramarines blue. But as you can see, I've also done the, uh, the disc of Araman with Talisar blue. And what we wanna do here is we wanna use the Ultramarines blue to darken down the flats of the disc as well as the insides um, but we want to kind of try and leave some of that Talisar blue showing around the edges to create our first edge highlight. So we're going to start by doing that and we're just going to use a little bit of ultramarines blue. We're just using a slightly smaller brush, it's a small airbrush and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick an area to start and I'm going to start right here and I'm just going to start painting this ultramarines blue all over like this, just kind of trying to avoid hitting the edges with this color. Like so. Similarly on the edge, on places like the shoulder pads, we're just gonna use this to add a little bit of a recess shade. So we're just gonna go along the inside like that around the rim with that done we're now going to apply some highlights to the blue using some thinned down Araman blue and so most of these edges are in fact on the on the disc itself and on the, on the sigils oh, on the on the flat of the platform um, but there's a couple on the model itself. So you've got things like on the feet and um, on the backpack as well. Uh, so you just want to kind of go around and you just want to start picking out all of these edges with the RMM blue. And 
this is a really subtle highlight, so you won't really be able to tell the difference, but it does establish our base for when we do the final spot highlight before we tie all of it together with a lovely glaze. Once that Araman blue is dry, we're going to use some thins down on Fenrisian grey to add a spot highlight. To all the sharpest edges scattered around the miniature. And lastly, for the armour, we're going to create a roughly eight or nine, whichever you kind of feel like when you've got the mixture on your palette, but like an eight or nine parts contrast medium to a Kelly and green. And we're going to use this as a glaze. And we don't want to use very much as we do this, but we just want to start painting this a Kelly and green all over. Like so. This is just to blend all of those blues together and those highlights together. And next up, we're going to focus on all of the gold details of which there are a lot. And so the color we're going to be using for this is Retributor Armour. And so we're just going to be very careful as we paint this because we've already done the blue parts, but we are just going to pick out all of the gold details. And so this is all of the kind of the trim, the kind of the, the casings for the jewels and um, on the disc as well. It's most of the details kind of, again, similarly like the, like, the, like trim and stuff. Um, so we just want to paint this Retributor Armour all over, just being careful so as to not put any of this on all that lovely bluey green that we've already painted in. And this part is going to be the lengthiest part of the process. So just take your time. Once all that gold is done, as you can see, there is tons of gold detail on this model. What we're going to do is we're going to paint all the silver parts using some thins down Grey Knight Steel. So we just want to start painting this onto all of the bits that we want to be silver. Once all that silver and gold is dry, we're going to give it all a shade of Basilicanum Grey. We're also going to use this as a good opportunity <clears throat> for any of the kind of really dark black bits that we can find all around the miniature. And this isn't including things like the ribbed pipes. Those are going to be black, but we don't want to do the grey over them because we don't want them to be like a super, super dark black because the contrast can do most of the work for us with those, with those particular pieces. However, what we want to do is for things like the gloves. We want to just apply a coat of this Basilicanum Grey all over the really dark black bits. So this is areas like the gloves and some of the Zinchian icons that you can see scattered around the model, like for example, on this icon here on the staff. You just want to keep going around, both shading all the metallics and blocking in all the parts that are going to be dark black. With all that Basilicanum grey applied, we're now going to highlight all of the silver before we do the gold. And the colour we're going to be using for this is, of course, Iron Hand Steel. Uh, so we just want to, for example, on the 
on these domes up here, we just want to kind of colour them in, but leave the Basilicanum grey nestling in the recesses. Like so. But for any of the other silver details, we just want to perform an edge highlight. So for example, on the kind of vents on the shaft, you just want to pick out the, that edge. With all the silver done, it's now time to highlight all of that gold. And we're going to be using Liberator Gold for this. And I do apologize to you all once again, but this is going to take some time as there is so much gold detail. But what we want to do is effectively, like we did with the silver, we just want to, any of these kind of circular objects, we just want to kind of paint the Liberator Gold all over it, leaving it where the shade, shade has settled. And then for the rest of it, we just want to pick out the edge, like so. So you just want to, once again, like on the talons holding the the vents, I'm just going to pick them all out with the gold, whilst leaving those recesses, like so. With those gold highlights done, we're now going to focus on finishing off the rest of the model details. And the first colour we're going to use is Black Templar. And so this is going to be for all of those black bits that we've already covered over with the Basilicanum Grey, but also for any of these um, ribbed cables that are going around Araman. So you've got the two on the front that come all the way around to the backpack. And of course, you've got the ones here on the backpack themselves. So we're going to be using Black Templar as a set. And we're just going to take some Black Templar on a brush. And we're actually going to just start on one of these gloves. We just want to be very careful as we paint this over the gloves so as not to get this on any of the lovely gold details that we finally finished. And we're just going to very carefully paint this all over. And next up, we're going to use some wildwood to colour in all of the leather parts. And this includes things like this strap going across his waist. And the gun holster. And the little bag hanging from his hecker staff. And next up we're going to paint in all the bone parts and this includes the little skulls, hang, beaked skulls hanging from his, from his belt thing around his around his hips and the little talon that's also hanging from here and there's one hanging off the staff as well and of course the color we're using for this is skeleton horde and we just want to make sure we're working it into all those details on the skulls because there are quite a few recesses that you can miss you're not just making sure that you're working it in. And next up, still continuing on that base coat train, we're going to be using some ethermatic blue, and this is for all the soft white parts that you can see around him. So he's got these two bits of fabric hanging from from his head. And you've also got his cummerbund. With that done, we're now going to colour in all of those horns, these ribbed horns that you can see, as well as the lamb's head on his shoulder pad. And we're going to be using two colours for this. We're going to be using Apothecary White and Basilicanum Grey. And what we do is we take the Apothecary White and we just slap it all over the horn, like so. We make sure we do the other side as well. And the inside of the horn, like that. 
And then, whilst that apothecary white is still wet, you can take a bit of Bacillacarnum grey, not very much, and we just apply it towards the top part of the horn like that. And you can strengthen it up, so just take a little bit more, and once again, just like so. Then you just rinse and repeat this process across all of these horns. Similarly for the lamb skull as well. So we just once again take a little bit of black to uh, silicone and grey and we just paint it all the way down until we're happy. And we do it again. And with that done, we've just got one set of base coats left to do before we do all of the highlights. And that's for this etheric energy that Araman's about to hurl at some poor unfortunate soul. And the two colours we're going to be using are Warp Lightning Green and Ethermatic Blue. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to take it in sections and we're going to kind of alternate between Warp Lightning Green and Ethermatic Blue as we go. So we start with the Warp Lightning Green. We take some on our brush. And we'll start here at the end of the contrail. So we just pick a place that we want to start from and finish it. So we're going to start kind of around, let's start around here. And we're just going to paint this Warp Lightning Green all over this section. Like so, you just want to make sure that when you pick a section to paint, you get it all over that section, like that. Then what we do is we wash our brush, and we take some ethermatic blue whilst it's still wet, and we just, from where we've finished, we pick it up again, and we start painting the ethermatic blue out. like this. And this will give us a nice kind of wet blended colour as we go. So we just want to keep alternating like this, making sure that we've covered over all of that section that's going to be blue. With that etheric energy all done, we're now gonna apply some highlights to the model. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the white horns and the skull and the uh, etheric energy. And we're gonna be using some thinned down also in gray for this. And we just wanna pick out the sharpest areas and the edges of each of these areas. So this also includes, I should say, these soft white areas. So we just want to effectively leave the ethermatic blue nestling in the recesses of the fabric to give it that really nice soft white look. Like this. Similarly on the horns, we're just going to be picking out the raised edges with this also in grey, like so. And on this energy, we just want to pick the areas of the, the, the kind of the sharpest areas, just to add a little bit of kind of the light catching. Mostly it's going to be within the ethermatic blue areas. like so. Just want to go around and do all of this. With all those Ulthu and Grey highlights applied, we're now going to work on all of the gems around Araman, and there is loads of them. 
Uh, and we're going to be using two colours for this. We're going to be using Ethermatic Blue and Achelian Green. And we start with Ethermatic Blue. And we want to pick a gem. So let's pick a nice big one. Let's go with this one on the shoulder pad. So what we do is we apply this Ethermatic Blue all over the gem. Like so. We want a nice, good, strong colour of this. Like so. Then we take a teeny bit of Achillean green, and whilst it's still wet, we just apply this Achillean green around the bottom of the gem and around the top, leaving a kind of bluey white surface in the middle. like so, we just want to go around and do this across all of the gems. Once all that ethermatic blue and Achillean green is dry, we're once again going to go back to Althuan grey, and this is just to add that final little kind of shine to all of these gems. And so we only want to use a teeny little bit of this, and we just want to add a dot right in the middle of where we've left that more kind of white area. So for example on this gem up here we just want to put a little bit of a dot right there in the middle. But on that big one that we started with you can see that we've got that little patch there in the middle. We just want to leave a little dot of this old in grey right in the middle like that just to give it that impression of that kind of that swirling etheric energy. We're just going to keep going around doing this, adding this little dot of Ulthu and Grey to all of these gems, and then we'll come back. With all of those gems complete, we can now focus on the last couple of details, and these include the feather and the whatever this is supposed to be underneath the disc. I suspect it's the demon itself. So what we're going to be using is we're going to be using Griffhound Orange as the colour for this. And it's very simple. What we do is for the feather, we just take a little bit of this on our brush and we just make contact with the feather and just pull that Griffhound Orange across it like that. Very nice and simple. Make sure to get both sides of it. Like so. For the bigger area, much like we do when we're doing any kind of large open surface, we just want to take a fair whack of this on our brush. We want to make contact with the model up here and just start pulling it down in these big, broad brush strokes, like so. And with that, Araman is finished. So all we've got to do now is work on the base. And so what we're going to do, as this is once again another Instagram giveaway, I'm going to be doing it based on the uh, my customers, or well, the lucky winner, the winner's specifications, and he's asked for a deserty, muddy ba base, much like in the box art. So the colour I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using some Armageddon dust, first of all. So I'm just going to use my texture spreader to get a nice even coat of Armageddon dust all over the base. And next up, we're going to create a roughly four to one mix of contrast medium to wildwood. I'm just going to use this to kind of take the edge off how bright this sand cover is. It doesn't need to be like a super strong coat. You can kind of make it a little bit patchy if you want, just to kind of see the leaves to get that kind of couple of different tones in there. And once that wild wood is dry, we're now going to give the whole base a very light dry brush of some Tyrant Skull.
I've added some tufts to the base and now the only thing left to do is to apply a color to the rim of the base and the color that we're going to be using is Steel Legion Drab for this one. So I've thinned some down on my palette and I'm just going to apply a nice even coat. You might need to do two thin coats just to build this up. And with that, Araman is complete. I really enjoyed painting this one and I hope you enjoyed watching it. This was a real joy to do. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.